So I would assume, talking to you, that the most important part to your anti-aging technique is nutrition. Correct. Does it start with what you eat? Absolutely. I mean, there are, you're right. There are other factors that control aging besides nutrition. Mm -hmm. And we'll get those out of the way because we're going to focus mostly on the nutritional aspects. Right. Like exercise, sleep, emotional poise, lack of stress, all the, you know, happiness quotients. All those things affect longevity, but nothing affects longevity as much as what you put in your mouth. Absolutely. That's the number one factor that controls it. For sure. I feel like that makes the most sense. Yeah. I don't know if it's because I grew up with you, but that absolutely makes the most sense to me. By the way, if you eat healthier, you sleep better. If you eat healthier, you have exercise capacity and you feel like being physically active. If you eat healthier, you're going to have less stress in your life and your mind's going to work better. And it's not, you know, you got it. There's other things we need too, but obviously the core basis is of good nutrition makes everything else easier to have go right in your diet, in your life. And as it's kind of, they all are in a circle working synergistically with each other. And if you kind of focus on one, then you have an interest and it bleeds into the other and it goes into the other. So I think starting with nutrition is always for the best too, because it has such a big impact in the other aspects, but start one and it will be good. You should prioritize all of them. For sure. So the most important thing when you're talking about nutrition is to eat nutrient-dense foods. Correct. So we're talking about the foundational principle of a nutritarian diet. Mm -hmm. The five words people have to always memorize. That's the most proven methodology is slow aging. And everybody should know these five words. Can I do it? Yeah. Okay. Um, and in wait, okay. Five words. Wait, wait, wait. I just want to make sure I get in the right order. Moderate caloric restriction in the environment of nutrition, nutri nut yeah, nutrition, nutrition adequacy or micronutrient excellence. That's correct. You kind of messed it up a little bit. But you guys kind of got it. I'm not you. Okay. It wasn't okay. perfect. I got Moderate nervous. Moderate caloric restriction with micronutrient excellence. I knew I had it. And then I got nervous for the camera. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Okay. You, you, yes. have, you had it for Thank sure. Thank you. You know what I meant. Right. Um, so we were talking about this a little bit. I understand what moderate caloric restriction is, and you might want to define it for everyone else. What is micronu What is moderate caloric restriction? Well, we're talking about, we know extreme caloric restriction could be make you too thin and not healthy and well-nourished. We want to have as much as we can with an art and a science of hit our caloric window in that correct range. And I use the term moderate caloric restriction to mean that we don't overshoot our caloric needs, but we undershoot it or we hit it right on the money, right in that range of undershooting a little bit or right on the money. You can't be, but if you start to hit over it, then you start to age faster. So let's talk about hitting it right on the money. We have a basal metabolic BMR, you know, so our BMR, basal metabolic requirement, and let's just say me at 150 pounds, my BMR is about 1,500 calories a day. Now, keep in mind, Americans eat 3,300 calories a day. My BMR is... And maybe my exercise and activity might add an extra couple, two or 300 on top of that. So now I have my BMR plus my exercise and activity put together in that 1,700 to 1,900 window, let's say. About your caloric needs for the day. My caloric needs for the day. Yeah, to okay. maintain this weight, which is your ideal weight. Correct, to maintain my ideal weight. So let's say, for example, instead of eating in the 17, 18, 1900 range with my BMR plus my activity level, I eat 2200, 2400, 2600 a day. Then I'm going to age more, I'm going to age quicker because the extra calories that I didn't have to have, the body turns into, bio, raises the body's metabolism to burn them. So the extra calories cause you to raise your metabolism, which means your body temperature goes up your thyroid function increases and the calories burned through respiration, your respiratory quotient starts to increase as well in an effort to burn off the extra calories you didn't need. And all those signaling that the body has to do to burn off the extra calories means you're running your metabolic engine at a higher rev, you're running your car at a higher speed and it makes you age faster and it cuts short your lifespan. Does this mean there's less time to rest and digest when you are constantly eating and that also increases? Yes, that's the true. Metabolic rate and inflammation. That's true too, is that to digest properly, we need to have digestive enzymes that aid in the digestive process. And when we eat a meal, 
there's so much digestive enzymes present to digest that meal, and they expunge themselves and empty their contents into the digestive tract, and they take hours to replenish themselves again, and you could be eating again before you had replenished them, or you ate till you were full, and you ate till you were lost the, the capacity to efficiently digest, then you get more bacterial overgrowth, more yeast formation, more toxic formation, and, and an unhealthy microbiome from eating till fullness and the empty cal extra calories you didn't need. So you form more toxicity for excess calories and the excess calories, of course, raise growth hormones too that also interfere with lifespan. So we're trying to be the best scientist slash artist. So every person knows their caloric needs and we're, hey, people can regulate that easily by seeing how much they weigh by knowing their body fat. So by combining exercise, good health and good sleep with eating right, we can keep our body fat low as we, and our ratio of muscle tissue to body fat low, so we age in good health, which is the complete opposite of what Americans, how Americans live, how they think, and, and what they're doing to protect their health. They're doing the complete opposite. They think it's healthier to have a faster metabolic rate so they can eat more and not gain weight. And we're saying, no, it's better to have a slower metabolic rate so you can eat less and, so you can eat less and not get too thin. So we're trying to eat so healthy that our body runs so efficiently and so without effort, so it doesn't even need as many calories now. If you eat really healthy, you don't have to eat as many calories to meet, get your nutritional needs met. You're comfortable with less. And now, instinctually, you desire less calories. 